What's happening guys, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about my tips on picking your first pair of running shoes. Most people don't realize the importance of using good quality running shoes, especially as they start to run more and add that into their weekly workout routines. So by the end of this video, you should have a game plan on how to find the best running shoe for you and what to look for. There are so many good running shoes and brands out there, so you really can't go wrong. It's all about finding what is gonna be best for your foot and what is comfortable for you. So let's get right into it. My biggest tip for new runners is to get a 3D scan of your foot from a local Local running store. Most running stores like Fleet Feet or Roadrunner Sports offer this 3D scanning for free. So just go check out and see if you have a local store near you. And if you don't have either of those two running stores, there should be a local running store near you that offers this type of service. The 3D scan is good to get because it's going to provide you information about your feet that you might not have known before. For example, your actual foot size. Most people don't realize, but their feet aren't actually the same size. Like when I went to get my 3D scan, I realized that my right foot was actually 11 and a half and then my left foot was an 11. So that's gonna change how a shoe fits on your feet. It's also gonna show the level of support and cushion that you might need in a shoe, as well as what size shoe you should get based on the scanning of your foot. So after they're done with the 3D scanning, it's gonna populate a shoe suggestion that's best for your foot. But it's only a suggestion, don't feel like you're obligated to get that exact shoe. It's actually smarter to test out various brands and different styles of shoes, just so you can get an idea of how a Hoka versus a Brooks versus Nike or Saucony how they're gonna fit differently on your foot. After you try on various brands and styles of shoes, you're gonna have a better understanding of what you're looking for and what is comfortable for your foot in a running shoe. So after you go to the 3D scan, you try on all five or 10 pairs of shoes, however many you wanna try on when you are there because most sales reps are very, very nice and friendly and they'll probably get you guys any requests that you guys have when you guys are at the store. But after you're done with all that, you obviously have a choice whether you wanna proceed and make the purchase in the store or you guys can order it online from a different vendor. Don't feel the pressure to make the purchase on the spot. If you've been in sales before, all sales reps are gonna to try to push you to make the purchase. But if you're not comfortable with the price of the shoe, you might have a better chance of finding it online for a better price. My second tip is for you guys to do some of your own due diligence and research on your own. And there's no better place to do this than YouTube University. There are so many good YouTube channels that focus on running shoes and running in general that you guys should follow. Some of my favorites are The Ginger Runner as well as Seth James Damore. And just watch the videos of shoes that you might consider getting so you can have a general idea of what to expect when you guys go to the running store. Knowledge is power, especially for purchases like this. So you wanna have a general understanding of styles and brands of shoes to look out for as you guys are browsing the running store. And look, you don't need to know every single detail about every single shoe, but having general knowledge is gonna help you make an educated decision on what shoe to purchase. But regardless, don't rely on the sales reps to give you guys all that information. Walk into the store having some general knowledge so you can make a better purchasing decision. Some things to consider before you make your purchase. The first one is gonna be price. And what are you willing to spend on running shoes? If you are becoming a serious runner, Maybe you're willing to spend between the $150 and $200 range for a pair of running shoes. But if you're a beginner runner and you don't want to spend that much money, maybe you're going to be in the range of $100 to $125. So have an idea of what you're willing to spend before you guys go to the running store. Next thing to consider is going to be the build quality. So we're talking about the setup and the construction of the actual shoe itself, specifically at the arch of the foot, because this is where a lot of people have issues if they pronate their feet, which basically means that you're turning your foot inward as you are running, or if you are supinated where your foot is turning outward, this is important because you're gonna need a shoe that responds to your foot. After getting your 3D scan, you're gonna have a better idea of where your foot applies the most pressure. So if you have very neutral feet, then you're gonna probably want more of a neutral shoe. But if you have some pronation or supination, then you might need something that has a little bit more stability and support. So then you're gonna look for a stability shoe. Once again, a lot of these decisions are gonna be case by case. So that's why it's good to get that 3D scan just to have some data points to run off before you guys make your purchase. Next up is gonna be durability of the shoe. So as you're looking at a shoe, you wanna look at the upper, the lower material. Is it more mesh material? Is it lighter? heavier, can it withstand longer miles, or is it more shorter distance and speed work related? And then the most important thing is, how many miles are you gonna be able to get out of this shoe? Like, is it gonna break down after your first couple hundred miles, or is it gonna be able to withstand a lot of mileage where you can get upwards to three, four, 500 miles with a pair of running shoes? Next, we're gonna talk about the functionality of the shoe. So basically, how are you gonna utilize it? Is it gonna be a road shoe? Do you need it for track or do you need it for the trail? Or maybe there's a hybrid shoe that can kind of do a little bit of everything. But having a plan on how you're gonna
going to utilize the shoe and how you're going to utilize it in training is going to help you make that buying decision. Finally, the last thing to consider, carbon fiber versus a regular shoe. In my opinion, I wouldn't recommend a beginner or a new runner to get a carbon fiber shoe. Typically, carbon fiber shoes are used for race day because they offer a lot of support and propulsion in your guys' runs. And some people would argue that it is a little bit more of a cheat code to have a carbon fiber shoe, especially as you guys are going into your half and full marathons. And it makes sense that carbon fiber shoes are great for those race day events but they typically are more expensive and they don't last forever. So if you only buy carbon fiber shoes, you're gonna have to replace them more often, which then ends up meaning that you're gonna have to spend a little bit more money. It's smart to have a race day shoe as well as a shoe that you plan on training in. Even though they're not the same exact shoe, when you end up using the carbon fiber shoe on race day, it's almost gonna feel a little bit easier, like a cheat code, because you're gonna have that extra propulsion and stability in that shoe. Personally, I wouldn't recommend getting a carbon fiber shoe as your first shoe, especially if you're just getting into running. But obviously that is just my opinion on it. If, you, if you're out there and you find that you really, really love a carbon fiber shoe and that it fits your foot perfectly, you can go ahead and make that decision. It is your foot, it is your shoes. But ultimately for me, I did not, I didn't end up getting a carbon fiber shoe until I got more into running, where then I was just rotating, you know, two or three pairs of shoes, using them for speed work or more for training and then using it for our actual race. So those are the tips I have for anyone out there that is a beginner runner that is looking to get into their first pair of running shoes. But before we close the video, I wanna give you guys two of my favorite running shoes. The first one is the Saucony Endorphin Speeds. Okay, these shoes are excellent for training. I've actually used them for half marathons, full marathons, and it doesn't have a carbon fiber plate. It actually has a nylon plate in it, but it's super responsive and very comfortable, and it retails at $170. The next one is the Hoka Rincon 2s, and this is on the cheaper side. It's $120, but it's a very good hybrid shoe. You can use it for a shorter distance, longer distance, you can use it on the track, and it's one of the lighter shoes on Hoka's lineup. So it still provides you with a ton of cushion, but it's not as heavier on the foot. The Rincons have actually been a shoe that I've been wearing on a day-to-day -day basis because they're super comfortable and you can pretty much do anything in them. I hope you guys liked the video and got some value out of it. And if you did, make sure you guys smash that like button so the algorithm can also help out other beginner runners in this journey of finding their first pair of running shoes. Also, if you do get a pair of running shoes after watching this video, make sure you drop in the comments what shoe you got and how much money you spent on your first pair of running shoes and if you're new to the channel i would love it if you guys subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so you guys get notified when i push out my next video just remember stay blessed be grateful and always find new ways to step out of your comfort zone that's all i got for y'all man until next time i'll see you in the next one deuces